Thank you, Dr. Rohit, and thank you to all organizers of the All India Ophthalmological Society of Ophthalmology for having me today to talk about this topic on how to decide what surgery is best for my patient with DVD. As you all know, DVD is one of the most mysterious forms of strabismus, and there have been many theories trying to explain the etiology of this disease. However, it is not the purpose of today's talk to, to explain these different theories, but rather to present a very practical approach on how to manage these patients surgically. So when do we indicate a surgery for our patients with DVD? There are three situations where surgery is recommended to our patients that suffer this disease. Patients with a DVD that is large and decompensates very frequently, resulting in a cosmetic problem. Patients that are at risk of developing or worsening pre-existing amblyopia when the deviation is frequent enough to produce intense suppression of the deviated eye. And patients who adopt a significant anomalous head posture to control the magnitude of the DVD. It is very important to uh, study our patients thoroughly. And the things that we're going to look into these patients are the visual acuity, magnitude of the deviation, the symmetry of the deviation, presence of non-dissociated vertical deviations, horizontal incompetency, and the presence of other dissociated deviations in order to come with an appropriate surgical plan. Assessing visual acuity is very important, especially in very asymmetric cases where you're probably thinking on doing unilateral case, uh, unilateral um, superior rectus recession. In these cases, you must to make sure that the non-preferred eye will never uh, get fixation uh, in order to avoid postoperative problems or inversion of the deviation. The magnitude of the deviation is also very important to assess in order to uh, plan how much surgery you will perform and in, on how many muscles. As you all know, DVD can be very asymmetric. Uh, look, for example, this case of this patient that had a DVD of 20 diopters on the right eye with a DHD of 10 diopters. And on the left eye, I could not elicit any DVD at all, but he had 15 diopters of DHD. So on the second day after performing our right superior rectus uh, recession and uh, bilateral lateral rectus recession, a DVD on the other eye appeared. That patient had 20-20 vision in both eyes. So this is a, a specific case where you can see that the patient can, fi can shift fixation and a DVD on the other eye uh, can appear. So beware when doing unilateral surgery. So in this case, I had to perform a recession of the left superior rectus in order to obtain a better cosmetic result. As you all also know, DVD is usually incomitant. It's usually a little bit larger in abduction than in adduction, but this incompetency can be much larger in specific situations. For example, in patients with DVD and inferior oblique overaction, you will find a hypertropia that is larger in adduction, but you will also find a V pattern and fundus excyclotorsion. Patients with superior oblique overaction and DVD will show hypertropia larger in abduction, an A pattern, and fundus in cyclotorsion. A larger hypertropia in abduction can also be found in patients with DVD and superior rectus overaction contracture syndrome. But in these cases, you will not have an A pattern. No a fundus in cyclotorsion can be seen, and but you will find a positive a very positive, actually, Bielchowski head tilt towards the hypertropic side. As you can see, there have been many surgical procedures de described for treating this disease. This reflects the fact that none is completely satisfactory. Uh, among them, superior rectus recessions, large recessions for bilateral cases, moderate recessions when only one eye is going to operate on, Inferior oblique anterior transpositions, they can be done with graded recessions, augmented by resections, 
nasal anterior transposition, plications or resection of the inferior rectus, small recession of superior rectus with posterior fixation or with wide splitting of the muscle. Actually, in one of the recent uh, ISA website postings, Dr. Pradeep showed a very interesting case with wide splitting of the superior rectus in a case of DVD, weakening of the four oblique muscles, and, and even recessions of both inferior recti has also been proposed for treating DVD by a Mexican strabismologist, Dr. David Romero Apis. But without doubt, the most popular procedure for DVD are the superior rectus recessions. Many surgical tables have been proposed. These are the numbers I like to use for uh, slight, uh, moderate, or severe DVDs. And personally, I like to place uh, fixed sutures because I think that in large recessions, the muscle might crawl back. But uh, Santa, the problem is that in large superior rectus recession, the tendon of the superior oblique can interfere where you want to place your sutures. This is why Julio Prieto Diaz from Argentina has proposed doing hang back sutures in these cases. What I do, because I don't like hang back uh, sutures in, in very large superior rectus recessions, is a pl I place a fixed suture on the temporal border of the superior rectus and then an emi hang back suture on the, on the nasal border. I place it not on the insertion a little bit further back, but I let it hang back. Inferior oblique anterior transposition are also popular procedures for treating these patients. It was proposed by Alan Scott in 1978, but it was described by Elliot and Nanking shortly after that. And this procedure was very popular during the 80s and the 90s, and many papers, as you can see here, have been published at that during that period. Inferior rectus plications or resection has been advocated as a primary procedure for DVD by the Mexican School of Strabismology, but usually it is used as a secondary procedure for recurrence or residual DVD. It should be moderate up to five millimeters in order to avoid restriction of elevation and changing the palpebral fissure. The superior rectus recession combined with uh, FADN has also been proposed first by Cooper's, and this is the original drawing of the Cooper's paper. And a non observable suture is used, placed it to 12 to 15 millimeters from the superior rectus insertion, which is not a very easy procedure to do. It needs good assistance. And in my opinion, it has not much advantages as doing a regular large superior rectus recession. Weakening of the four oblique muscles have been proposed by David Guyton, and it was supported by several authors, as you can see in these papers. It is specially recommended in cases with symmetrical DVD uh, combined with a uh, large A pattern uh, due to superior oblique overaction. So in conclusion, DVD can manifest in different clinical scenarios and the surgical strategy has to be adjusted accordingly. If you have cases with symmetric or asymmetric DVD and no oblique dysfunction, symmetric or asymmetric bilateral superior rectus recession is recommended. In cases with very asymmetric DVD and very deep amblyopia in, in the eye, which is more hypertrophic, like in this case, of a baby with 18 months baby that had uh, that was aphakic on the left eye, and you are for sure you know that the fixation is not going to change to to the other eye, and and no overaction of inferior oblique in these cases a unilateral moderate superior rectus recession between four and six millimeter is recommended. In case in patients with DVD and, in, and bilateral inferior oblique overaction, like in this patient who was operated for a congenital isotropia and later on developed a DVD, uh, inferior oblique anterior transposition in both eyes is the way to go with very stable results, as you can see here, the patients 20 years afterwards. If the DVD is very large, over 20 diopters, then uh, the inferior oblique anterior transposition can be combined with superior rectus recessions. 
patients with unilateral DVD, very poor vision in the non-fixing eye and unilateral inferior oblique overaction benefit from a unilateral inferior oblique anterior transposition as in this girl that had a foveal ectopia due to dragging of the optic to the, to the, to the macula uh, due to prematurity. And with stable results, as you can see, the same patients three years postoperatively. Patients with unilateral DVD and poor vision in the non-fixing eye, but bilateral inferior oblique overaction and V pattern, as this patient with a morning glory syndrome on the right eye will benefit of bilateral inferior oblique anterior transposition. And as you can see also with stable results, results four and a half years postoperative. Patients with DVD and that A pattern and superior oblique overaction, like in this patient that was operated uh, for a congenital isotropia and many years afterwards developed this DVD can benefit of, from different surgical strategies. I like the approach that Federico Vélez suggested in this papers. When the A pattern is small, up to 10 diopters, a bilateral rectus recession is enough. In, and when the A pattern is moderate between 10 and 20 diopters, uh, you can add a posterior tenectomy of the superior oblique tendon. And if the A pattern is much larger, uh, you can add a, a complete superior oblique tenectomy. Also, a four oblique muscle weakening can, procedure can be performed. And finally, patients with decompensated DVD after large bilateral recession of superior recti without inferior oblique overaction, like this uh, pseudophagic uh, boy that still had a decompensated DVD on the left eye, a plication or resection of the inferior rectus can be performed. Remember, this has to be moderate, up to five millimeters in order to avoid uh, uh, uncosmetic results. So to conclude, there are many different surgical options to treat patients with DVD. You have to be very careful in indicating a surgical procedure for your patient with DVD. Remember that the DVD very rarely will disappear and this has to be very carefully explained to the patient. And examine your patient very carefully in order to choose the most appropriate surgical plan. Thank you very much for your kind attention today. And let me stop sharing my slide. Thank you, Dr. Molinari. It was a wonderful presentation on a very, very complicated topic. And we all know, as you 